My name is John Phillips. I've got nothing left to lose. I'm stuck in East Haven. I've got the Joe Hines blues. How much do you have to earn before no one can take it all away? Maybe, maybe I'll get out of here someday. Hello and welcome to Hard Fire. My name is Jim Lisinski. I'm your host. Heartfire is a program of political discussion from a libertarian perspective. My guests tonight are Dee Woodburn, Chair of the Committee to Free Judge Phillips, and John O'Hara, Vice Chair of the Committee to Free Judge Phillips. Thank you both for being here this evening. Thanks Thank for you. Uh, uh, Dee, let me start with you. Yes, uh, we should start with um, who is Judge Phillips and why do we want to free him? Well, Judge Phillips is a very unique man. Um, he is an African-American man that was born in Kansas 83 years ago. Um, during his traveling of his lifetime, um, he's had various ventures um, in life. Uh, he is an attorney. He's a retired judge. He's also a martial art expert. Um, and um, he's a community activist. Wow. He's also a multi-million dollar business person uh, within the bed community. Um, Judge Phillips um, has always been, from my understanding, um, the type of gentleman that was very concerned about the community and has always been pro-community and, and a pro-person, people person. Um, and um, the fact now that he's in such a precarious situation uh, in the guardianship program that was um, deemed by Brooklyn Supreme Court. This um, is the uh, Brooklyn District Attorney's Senior Citizens Assistance Unit? Yes, um, actually uh, D.A. Hines is right. the individual who asked um, his former Chief of Staff, Harvey Greenberg, and a um, friend of 30 years from what I understand, to petition the court to bring Judge right. Phillips into the guardianship program. Now, this is interesting. Now, Charles Hines, uh, the Brooklyn District Attorney, and those of you who are past viewers of Hard Fire know we've discussed Charles Hines before. And in fact, our, our other guest, John O'Hara, has been a, a past guest on Hard Fire where we've talked about uh, Charles Hines. But D, um, now why did Charles Hines pick uh, Judge Phillips out of all the senior citizens of Brooklyn to, to focus on? And it was just out of the goodness of his heart that he saw this elderly gentleman that uh, he wanted to take into custody? Well, it doesn't appear that it's out the goodness of his heart. Uh, it, appear, it appears more of a selfish motivation. Okay. Um, what, what motivation would a politician have for, for putting somebody into custody? Well, Judge Phillips had planned to run for the DA's ah. office. Yeah. Yeah, we have a theme here. We have a recurring theme. Hey, Somebody wanted to run this. against <laughs> Judge, Judge uh, Charles Hines. Yeah. I see. Does make looking, uh, losing your uh, law license um, no. that doesn't seem so no. bad in comparison. No. Mm -hmm. So, so Judge Phillips, um, when when was he going to run against Charles Hines? I believe it was in two thousand one okay. that he would plan to run in, right. against him. I know. Um, and from the records um, that we have available, it, it shows that Judge Phillips was put into the guardianship program in 2000. Okay, so he announces he's going to run against Charles Hines for district attorney, and Charles Hines starts the wheels in motion to, to get him put into custody. Exactly. Um, from my understanding and from his associate, Mr. Hardy, Clarence Hardy, who is a, lo uh, a longtime friend of his as well, and also a business associate, um, informed me that um, he went to um, D.A. Hines office with Judge Phillips um, to make a complaint against some of the characters within the community that he had entrusted management of several of his properties mm -hmm. um, and that he felt that there was some scam going on to try to defraud him on some of his properties. Um, at that present time, um, apparently uh, from the records, uh, you know, from information and belief that D.A. Hines stated that when he interviewed Judge Phillips, it appeared that he was suffering from dementia. And how he knew this is because his mother was supposedly okay. had it. So, so, so uh, Ch Charles Hines, with his uh, vast medical training, yeah, had a apparently. diagnosis uh, <laughs> of dementia. Dr. Hines yeah. told him, uh, <laughs> yeah. my yeah. opponent's got dementia. He's going to run against right. me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so um, let me ask you this. Um, and, uh, uh, Dee, I don't think you, did you know Charles, um, Judge Phillips in, in 2001 when this case first started? No, no I okay. did. Uh, 
John, you've known him for a while. Yeah, I've, I've known George Phillips for about yeah. 20 years, since the mid-1980s. Did you see somebody who no. needed to be committed, no. arrested, no. demented? No, no, and what, uh, what, what Diaz discovered, you know, getting into mm -hmm. this, is this is not really an isolated case. This is uh, something that's going on in Brooklyn, and it, it's really horrible. What happens is uh, they've set up this unit at the DA's office called the Senior Citizens Assistance Unit. And if a senior goes to them and uh, has a problem, what they do is they file an application with the court ex parte, which means the person doesn't know about it. <laughs> they seize all their, they seize their property, meaning their house, oh. and then uh, they proceed to let liens run up on taxes, and a year or two later, they sell it in an unpublished auction. Oh. And uh, like with Judge Phillips, for example, I'll just give you one example. Okay. Uh, Judge Phillips uh, was a very, he was a big landlord. He owned about 17 apartment buildings and two movie theaters. And uh, virtually all of these buildings have been sold in unpublished auctions. Uh, he had three buildings that were worth 800 grand each. They were sold in an, in an auction that nobody knew about mm -hmm. except the DA's friends, and they were bought for 100 grand each. Okay. So, you know, this is like what tech stocks were of the 90s. This right. is what real estate is of this decade. Right. And it's a form of insider trading. So uh, what happened was, in 2001, Phillips was going to run for DA against Hines. In 2000, exactly one year before the race, the Brooklyn District Attorney's Office, and it's on the caption, Hines versus JJ Realty, the Brooklyn District Attorney's Office files an application saying they believe Judge Phillips was the victim of a crime, okay. and they need a, a guardian appointed to seize right. his property, okay, which now is what happened. Right. And the DA's former chief of staff just happened to be appointed the guardian. Right. And since then, it's been a horror story. Right. At the moment, uh, Judge Phillips, I spoke to him a few days ago, he's under lockdown in a nursing home in the Bronx. Right. He is, uh, the home wants him out, and he is, at, the, at this point, what we're working on now is trying to get a place right. for him. He's literally homeless. Now, now the, the people that, okay, so the professionals at the home where he is currently um, confined, confined yeah. they, don't, they don't even think he belongs there. No, he doesn't belong there. Yeah. The, the doctor is, I mean, when you look at the court file is sealed on this, yeah. but we've managed to see parts of okay. it. And uh, the doctors that testified, that the DA's office got to testify at the hearing, said mm -hmm. he needs somebody to look in on him. The only thing they said that was disturbing is that he said, he, Phillips had told the doctors that he felt he was a victim of a conspiracy right. by the DA's office because he was planning to run for DA. And based on that, they they start to look crazy. Right. Yeah, they said, well, you must be crazy. Yeah. The, go the government wouldn't conspire against <laughs> yeah, you. So. They're, they're here to help. Yeah, yeah right. And uh, <laughs> with, with that kind of help, I, you, right. know, you yeah, can do without. <laughs> uh, gee, uh, he must have family, uh, people that, if nothing else, even uh, if they didn't care about him, would have been interested in seeing the full value of, it, of his estate at some point and not seeing them sold off at, at, uh, at a fire sale. Uh, where were they when all this was happening? Well, unfortunately, um, Judge Phillips uh, never been married, and he's never had any children. He has family in Ohio. His brother has since died in last August, um, and his niece, um, which has been di very difficult for her because she has three young children as well, and she's married. But she has. I've gotten her involved over the past three years. She was involved previously before I came in. Um, she came to New York, she agreed to move to New York to help her uncle, but um, the attorney that was, uh, a, I guess, appointed or hired by Judge Phillips, Imani Taylor, was not cooperative um, on, on a long distance term. Um, it was hard for Stephanie Moss, which is Judge Phillips' niece, to contact her. Um, and Miss Taylor is the guardian, a person, was guardian of person and property and the attorney. So, I mean, it was like an open and closed right. case, you know, it was hard. Um, she would not return phone calls. She was not cooperative. So um, when I got involved, which was two years later, um, I called Symphony and I introduced myself over the phone. I told that I would like Symphony to help. Symphony is the niece. The niece, right. yes. And I told I would help, like to help Judge Phillips in this situation because I don't believe any, any person deserves this at, at all, and especially mm -hmm. someone that's their own colleague. I mean, he's a retired judge, he's right. an attorney, he's a business person. Yeah. I mean, he's not any Joe Blow standing on the corner bending right. his elbow over the 40, you know what right. I'm saying? So, I mean, when do we get the respect that we are supposed to have, right. you know? So when, now, this, this judge that has been presiding over this case that went along with the DA uh, confined, yeah. putting him into custody, is this, uh, has he been asleep with the switch? Is he, no, is no, he no. Listen, listen. It's, this doesn't happen by accident. Yeah. You don't come in and steal $10 million right. of property uh, without 
people being involved. Right. I mean, no. The judge uh, Pesci, who has uh, been presiding over this, the court file is sealed without explanation okay. in violation of judiciary law. There's supposed to be an accounting. I mean, you know, Phillips has had, look, we just go to court and you see one building getting sold here for three million, another yeah. one for 800,000. No one knows what happens to any of this money. And the six years that he's been in this guardianship program, there's never been an accounting. Yeah. And the judge who's presiding over it just yeah. keeps saying, oh no, we're all trying to help Phillips. Don't worry about it. Now, interesting, the judge, Pesci, has recused himself on a sale of one of the buildings for about three or four million dollars because of a conflict of interest. He approves the sale, then another judge approves it, and then it goes back to him. My point is, what's happening to Phillips is horrible, and mm -hmm. millions of dollars have disappeared, and you know, there is nothing, if you have the DA and the court in on it, there's nothing you can do about this. Right. You know, even yeah. if, like you said, even if you had relatives here, you know, what are you going to do? Call the cops? Right. I mean, this is Everybody's the judge yeah. and the prosecutor. Yeah, the fix is in. Yeah. There's no way to there's no way to go. Right. You know, uh, Ms. Woodburn has filed a complaint with the Attorney General yeah. Elliot Spitzer. Yeah. Has Commission shown any interest? Conduct. The Commission on Judicial Conduct, Conduct and Judge Kay. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, uh, prosecutors don't prosecute each other. Right. That just doesn't <coughs> happen. So uh, we sit in court and you see these other cases that are similar. And it's the same thing. People come in, their mother's house, uh, the DA's office started a proceeding. The DA's former chief of staff is a court-appointed guardian, and they're being sold in unpublished mm -hmm. auctions. And you see it all day long. Mm -hmm. uh, the pattern seems to be that the people that are losing their houses... They're all running against Charles Hines. Uh, no, not all of them. <laughs> okay. only one. But what they have in common is uh, they all seem to be living in Crown Heights and bed okay. They're all black. And, uh, you know, and this is what's happened. You have houses in bed that were worth 120 grand 15 years ago that are now worth a million two. Right. And they're being sold in an auction nobody knows about except the people who show up at the auction. Okay. And the people, it's just horrible and it's, it's a shame because, yeah. you know, the proper functioning of our courts is what keeps us a civilized yeah. society. Yeah. And these are not small cases. The DA's, off, the DA's former chief of staff, uh, so far from what we found, he's presided as a referee over 160 different pieces of property. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. I mean, this uh, is nice. I, I was going to say, now, there, there's been a lot of cases in the news over the last few years with trustees getting appointed by, mm -hmm. by judges in Brooklyn, and they seem to be have a, a legal re pa past legal history with the judges, friends of the judges, right. and, and they appoint them as a trustee because the, right. the, the, the fees are pretty significant. Yeah, if, if they were, look, if they were stealing fees, fine. Yeah. You, you get used to that. Yeah. What they're doing is just taking the whole thing <laughs> right. and then they don't tell you where the money is. I mean, yeah. it's, it's one thing to take Judge Phillips' buildings that are worth 800 grand and sell them for 100 grand, yeah. but then they won't even tell you where the money is. Right. <coughs> so where, mean, is, where is the money? There's been no accountability. No, no I mean, who, nobody, knows. Who nobody knows? knows where the money is. It's nobody been sold. knows. That's what we're trying to find out. And, the, the, <laughs> and the, uh, and the, two, the, the custodians won't talk to you? Well, not, not really. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they pass Judge Phillips on like a, you know, a paper doll, you know, it's like the first guardian was Harvey Greenberg, then they brought in Frank Lavodi, which is also a friend of Hines. Uh, Hines brought in someone named Ray Jones, Ray Jones. Who, who was, Ray Jones was the court appointed attorney for Judge Phillips at the hearing of the guardianship program, and then he ends up being co-guardian with Frank Lavodi, a per person and property of Judge Phillips. So, I mean, this is like, you know, really passing the, the situation of passing the buck, and now it's dropped in Imani Taylor's um, lap. So, wow. um, but from what I understand, um, based on the, the court papers, when we're due back in court August 24th, that everyone involved is now brought back in. Wow. Um, there has to be some accountability. Um, this man, like I said, I mean, the, the statue of this man, he de definitely does not deserve this. Hey, D, I, 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 you hold that thought, and I want to get back to, we're going to be in court soon. Uh, we're going to just pause here for a brief public service announcement. Uh, you wa you've been watching Hard Fire, and Hard Fire, as I mentioned, is a program of libertarian discussion. If um, you find libertarian ideas interesting, if you don't really know what libertarian ideas and political theory is, uh, I encourage you to check out the Manhattan Libertarian Party. The Manhattan Libertarian Party is the Manhattan affiliate of the Libertarian Party of New York, the Libertarian Party of the U.S. Uh, we run candidates for office. We uh, have political protests. We, we get involved in the public debate and make sure there's an actual opposition to the, the Democrat side of the ruling party and the Republican side of the ruling party, because there's really not much difference between the Democrats and the Republicans. Uh, we're running candidates this year 
from governor all the way down to assembly. I'm running myself for assembly against Sheldon Silver, the uh, speaker of the assembly this year. And uh, it's a, it, we have a lot of fun. I encourage you to check us out, get involved. We meet the second Monday of every month. We have dinner. Uh, we have guest speakers. It's a lot of fun. Uh, go to ManhattanLP.org on the internet. That's uh, www.ManhattanLP.org and find out our, about our meetings, find out how you can get involved. We just want to get on our mailing list and uh, be a part of the libertarian revolution. And now back to our program. Okay, D. Yes. Uh, now we were discussing Judge Phillips and his continued confinement uh, against his will and now and so now it's been five years now six six wow okay and so now where we are, are we now we're going back to court um soon? Is august 24th okay. we're back in court again you got a good attorney we yeah. have an excellent attorney he found a lawyer oh <laughs> i don't know if i found him but god knows he put him there yeah, wow. <laughs> but he's he's terrific i mean he's wonderful ezra glazer and i mean he has the heart to push the envelope and um you know, I, I, I'm so impressed with this gentleman, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, it's good for Judge Phillips, you know, because yep. it shows that someone in the legal profession cares about right. him, you know, and yep. he's given his part of his life to the legal profession sure. and the judicial um, society, and I, I just feel that he, he deserves better than this. Yeah, I how is Judge Phillips doing? Is he? Is He's he, doing great under the circumstances. Yeah. I mean, he always states that you know he never drank, he never smoked. Mm -hmm. He's a martial art expert, expert, yeah. and he you know holds on to his, his health and, and to his ideas. You okay, know, so he, and he knows what they're doing to him. He, he says all the time, these SOBs are still in my buildings, you okay. know, my property. You know, is he able um, to participate and help out in this case at all? Or? Not, not really. But um, the he's, legal he's papers under, we get it yeah. to he's him. Under lockdown. He's under okay, lockdown. Right. So he's so, so it's not a question of his capacity. It's more of his. No, he when, can't get to him. When the judge presiding over the case yeah. started buying his buildings and the guardian themselves, yeah. uh, the judge issued an order that no one can visit, call. Phillips cannot receive any mail without court approval and supervision. Jeez. Serial killers get visitors. Right. Judge Phillips can't get visitors, and I know. I tried to go see him in the Bronx, yeah. and they call the cops, yeah. and you know. Even his own attorneys can't go see him. Uh, not without court permission, wow. and no one, no one explains this. This is really something out of yeah. Kafka. You know, what's really disturbing is that you know Judge Phillips, well, he's, he's a, he was a judge, right. and when you see uh, you know someone get a number done on them in the system, it's almost like well those things happen. But it's it's disturbing to see that somebody who was a former judge, right. he was a judge from 1976 to 1995. Yeah. He's been around the block. There was forced uh, retirement at the age of 70. Okay. Um, what year did he go off the bench? Yeah, 1995. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and he had to go off because he turned 70. And he petitioned the U.S. Supreme Court to, that it was age discriminatory. You know, he didn't make that. But uh, I remember, you know, I helped him get back on the bench in 1992. He was 68 years old. And I said, Judge, you know, what are you doing this for? You, you know, you got to go off the bench in two years. And he was like, no, nah, I'm going to do this and that. And, you know, I've known him for a long time. And uh, you hit the nail on the head early when he said, well, aren't there people, his family and all that? The reason why they were able to seize control so quickly is because Judge Phillips is a bachelor with no children. He has no relatives in the state of New York. And, uh, you know, that kind of made it a little easier for right. them to... But when they seized control of his uh, property, he didn't know about it. Right. And then all of a sudden his electricity went off, and it turns out his accounts have been sealed up. You know, and it got to the point where in 2002 he was living without heat and hot water. I, I, okay, yeah, I saw that in oh. the, one of the court filings. Said, uh, yeah, how, how did he end up with heat and hot water? The guardians never paid for anything. The guardians refused to. They refused to pay for utilities, heat, food. I mean, we basically people in the neighborhood had to take up a collection oh. just so he wouldn't freeze to death. And then, I mean, it's it's really like something out of Dickens. Yeah. It's it's really horrible. Yeah. But uh, look, he tried to run for DA, and then what happened was he couldn't, and then Sandra Roper started to run, and Heinz locked her up. So, you know, so yeah, here well, we are. Here know. we are. <laughs> here we are. Okay, so, so, so what's happening in, in court um, at this next hearing? What, 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 what are we... Well, like Dee said, there's this attorney that stepped in. Okay. And, you know, he knows he's never going to get paid. And, uh, you know, we try not to tell him that. But, right. You know, and uh, he's, he's put it all together in the court filings. He's put down the whole story. He's demanded an accounting. And he's very tenacious, and we're back in court. At this point, the home where he's at mm -hmm. uh, wants him out so he can get out. But the problem is he has no place to go. He's yeah. gone from being a person who owns 17 buildings to being homeless. Wow. 
and his I mean, buildings get sold, 800 grand here. We They've gutted out his personal yeah. home, his, his, his own, you know. He was going to go back to his, his house. house. It burned down they, a week before he was supposed to It was set on fire. It was set know. on fire, and the Guardians didn't pay the insurance. Yeah. So that's right. a shell. So, okay. you know, it's because of uh, Judge Phillips' unique uh, tenacity to stay alive yeah. <laughs> that he's alive. But, right. uh, you know, if, if what you're hearing, it, it kind of just sounds mechanical, court-appointed Guardians. Right. You know, but it's like cancer. You know, when it happens to you, it's the worst thing in the world. And this isn't just Judge Phillips. These yeah. are dozens of buildings that, that get sold. So yeah. when the Senior Citizens Unit comes calling, telling you they want to help you, you know. When the man from the government calls and says, we're, we're from the government, we're here to help. It's not the government. It's the Brooklyn DA. It's Brooklyn DA. And his chief of staff, yep. uh, Dino Amoroso, was yeah. making a ton of money off these things, and he resigned last yeah. year. Hines is former chief of staff. I mean, if you think that these guardians, that the judge presiding over it and the DA are sitting there just so some private attorneys can make off with loot. Right. No, that's not the case. They are, there's tens of millions of dollars going. This is the corruption in right. the Brooklyn courthouse. Right. It's not Gossin with a box of cigars. Right. This is the corruption. And the judges in the courthouse are participating in these unpublished auctions. Right. So it's yeah. millions of dollars and don't expect anyone to do anything about it. I, I also think that it's, it's very um, shameful um, that n it, none of the um, governmental uh, officials or judges like Judge Kay, Chief Judge of the State of New York, Elliot Spitzer, um, you know, where we file complaints with have responded. Um, and I'm sure they know what's going on besides the complaints. They right. see it in the paper. It's and it's a, I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, it's like they yeah, like ignore it and it'll go away, you know, yeah, yeah. kind of situation. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's what, what I, I was wondering, and this may seem naive, but even beyond getting judge, and I hope we get you know, get Judge Phillips out and get him some of his, his money back if the if there's any left of it. Uh, but is there any way that anybody's going to go after any of these scumbags? I mean, I mean no, nobody's going to be able to touch Hines, but any of these guardians that oh, neglected sure. their fiduciary duty, is there going to sure. be any definitely, any, definitely, any yeah. against them? they have to be made accountable. Yeah, you know, and they have to be made examples of because we should be protecting our elderly. You know, sure. we should not be taking advantage of them, and when you know they feel that you know they have no recourse. You know, um, and definitely, yes, as they say, heads are going to roll. Right. <laughs> Yes, definitely, yeah. without a doubt. I mean, you know, it's, it's not a hush-hush situation like John says, and I, I concur. You know, this is a man that was a judge, a retired judge at 17 years on the bench, and, you know, a, a, an attorney, you know, yeah. um, a scholar. Yeah, and, yeah. And he, he was a pretty colorful judge. Oh, yeah. He's, he's still he's colorful. Yeah, he was, he was the Kung, yeah. Fu judge. Kung Fu judge. Kung that's Fu judge. right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, I mean, he still, he still has that spirit okay. and that personality. He's still alive yeah. inside, you know, yeah. and, and that's what keeps him going. And he knows he's going to have his, his real day yeah. in court. I mean, it seems like, in a way, like an incredible American success, success story. So he came from Kansas. Yes, on a uh, farm. And on a farm. Yeah. So he didn't have a lot, of, he didn't come from money. Not at all. Managed to get. This is a real estate empire. His parents a judge. were sharecroppers. He yeah. was the first black man admitted to the Montana State Bar. Yeah. yeah. Probably the yeah, only yeah, black man. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, uh, I mean, it just scares you to think that like a, a sharp guy like that, who obviously has a lot of law, that. He made happen, his own movies. Yeah. Yeah. If it could happen yeah. to him, it could happen to yeah. anyone. And yeah. it will happen to it anyone. Will. Yeah. You know, it will. I mean, definitely. It's, uh, yeah. It's, 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 it's. I mean, we think we're safe, but when you run across something like this, you know you're not. Yeah, you know. I mean, well, I, I guess, you know, you, you see a lot about you know, the need to appoint, um, to take set these things up ahead of time so that, you know, somebody's not appointed late in the game. Did he have any sort of estate planning, any sort of uh, will or, or, well, or it wasn't trust. like he died or anything. I know, but but a lot of people have like, like a, I mean, I'm not an attorney, but they, I think there's things that call a living uh, a living well, if trust. He had, if he where had. if anything happens to you, well, no, no, no you nothing. Can, nothing happened to him. What happened was the DA <laughs> said we believe he's the victim of a crime, and yeah. it turns out there was no crime. Yeah. But I, I got to tell you, when the DA's office actually raided Phillips' house, and uh, you know Took seized his records. his records, and Phillips called me that day. This was sometime in 2001. I'll be honest with you. When he called me and told me the DA's office just raided his house and took his records, I didn't believe him. It, it sounded so far out. So I went over and I, uh, I got a tape recorder and I hooked it up to his phone and I said, Judge, this is what you do. Calm down. You know who the prosecutor was that raided your house. In a day or two, call him and engage him in conversation and see if he admits it. He calls up the AD. They admit it to the whole okay. thing. If I didn't hear it on tape, and, you know, he said, like, why did you raid my house? And he said, you know, I'm going to run for DA. 
And they said, yeah, Judge, you know, we know you did it before. And, like, they had this tone in the voice like, you better eh, look at what you have. Yeah, you know? boy, you're yeah. in a heap of trouble now. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, and then Phillips says he's going to run for the and they go, well, you know, it takes a lot of money to do that. You know, Judge, the, you, you see, what it is is, you know, the population has changed. The vote in Brooklyn is two-thirds black and Hispanic. Right. And in Brooklyn, you can't stop black people from voting, but you can stop them from right. running. Right. You know, they've, they've, they, they, they've, they've smartened figured up that in the part out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, and that's what it is, you know. Yeah. So, look, you know, Phillips is back in court. <coughs> I like the guy, and, mm -hmm. I, and I hope he's, uh, he's got a great spirit. You know, he's really he got that. That's, that's something that just comes across as soon as you yeah. meet him. And uh, it's tough, but mm -hmm. I believe yeah. we will get him out yeah. at some point. And, uh, but, you know, when you have the judge on the bench in on it and the prosecutor, mm -hmm. you're, <laughs> yeah. things don't go well when you step right. into a courtroom. I mean, it's yep. all done. Sure. And why Pesci just refuses to have an accounting of this money, why he seals the court file, why he issued an order that no one can speak to Phillips. I mean, what? I, none of this stuff makes sense. It's yeah. sheer madness. It's uh, incredible. Yeah. D, is there any sort of legal fund that the committee set up? Any people wanted to, to help out? Is there well, anything people um, can do? The gentleman, Papa Dish, has uh, agreed and allowed us to, to copy the CD that he made. Um, for Judge Phillips called the jo uh, Johan Blues. Okay. Um, so we're trying to, you know, get that, those out. Basically, um, it's just been myself and John and, and Mr. Hardy, uh, so forth, that has been, you know, doing things out of our own pocket. Okay. And we just volunteer. The attorney, know, just, the attorney you know, doing the, the work. Doing the attorney is doing the work, you know. Okay. We haven't had any fundraising, you right. know, anything. We slip into offices at night, make yeah. photocopies, and yeah. <laughs> 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 use people's postage meters, I mean, that type of stuff. Yeah. John, we, do, we just have a minute left, but I just wanted to follow up. Um, and uh, we've been talking about how Charles Hines screwed this poor guy that tried to run against him for DA. And this isn't the first time he's done something like that. You, you've had a, a well, and I wouldn't say similar, but you, you, you were going to run against uh, Charles Hines once before. We no, had I was just, I had run for office, yeah, and yeah. I had run other people for office. Right. And, and you and want to give a quick re recap of what your case was about? Yeah, I got locked up for registering to vote and right. voting. It was the first case like it. Yep. And uh, it became three trials, one of the most expensive cases in, in New York State. And uh, then Harper's Magazine got involved, and uh, they did an article. And the DA, my opponent, admitted that you know he made a deal with the DA, and it was all published. And right. and I filed these motions to overturn it because it was selective. And of course, it went nowhere in the Brooklyn courts. But since uh, it's meandered its way, where I'm filing a petition with the Supreme U.S. Supreme Court right. in about a month, based on being a selective prosecution. So right. look, we're hanging in there, but okay. you know this is this so, is the frontier out here. So you know? the misadventures of Char Charles Hines <laughs> continue, and we're going to keep you updated here on Hardfire. I want to thank our guests tonight, D. Woodburn, chair of the committee uh, to free uh, Judge Phillips, and and John O'Hara, the uh, vice chair of the committee to free Judge Phillips. I'm Jim Lazinski, and you've been watching Hardfire. Thank you, and good night. Seventeen years on the bench overturned Only one time thought I'd run for DA While I was still in my prime A friend of Joe Hines Declared me incompetent A danger to myself And to the establishment